So tell us a bit more about that. Well, um, the last album was a couple of years ago now, and um, I, I spent um, a bit of time out from from writing um, around the time I did Jesus Christ Superstar. So yeah. I just sort of threw myself into that, and then when that show finished, I, I started writing the new album, which um, we've been been working on on and off for for about a year. And uh, it's it's all coming together now. Um, so hopefully we'll be out in the next few months. So it's lots of new new songs to share with everybody. And obviously, if you're doing music full time, this mm-hmm. is you know you you spend your whole day on your music, don't you, and writing. But you're actually writing your new album whilst working, looking after children, and everything else that you know life entails. Yeah, yeah. Which is why it takes it takes a bit longer. Um, but it's it's nice because it's it's a project that I'm doing for me. So I've I've put no pressure on myself to um, to get it finished quickly. I, w- I want to get it finished and make sure that it's absolutely right, and I can look back on it and and think, yeah, we we did that the the way I wanted it to be done, and we didn't sort of cut any corners or or compromise on 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 any of any of the the, the songs. So do you have a special place that you go to give yourself inspiration when you're writing, or can you just switch off and pretty much write anywhere? I tend to write when I'm um, hill walking. Actually, I and do. You do I a do lot. A lot of that, I yes. do a lot of hill walking. Yeah, I got two dogs, um, and I, I love being up uh, in the hills. You know, it, and and certainly for lyrics, it's it's great. And I do take a lot of inspiration from our our landscape here. So you're yeah. used to this very windy weather while walking out <laughs> on the hills it. with the dogs. Yeah, I'd, I'd be up North Barul if uh, if I could be today. Um, <laughs> but one of one of the dogs was was neutered last week, so she's she's on lead walks only, poor thing. And this is why you're covered in hair today. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realise you'd be videoing this or recording <laughs> it. I am absolutely covered in dog hair, um, and I'm wearing scruffy outdoor clothes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I tried to make the effort today, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you should have done the same. Well, I'm dressed for radio, definitely. <laughs> But radio is no longer just radio. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I forgot to mention that one to you. Um, so you mentioned there about um, Jesus Christ Superstar, which I went to see a couple of years ago, and mm. you were fantastic. The whole oh, show was fantastic. Um, is there anything else coming up on the theatre front for you? It was an amazing experience. Uh, I've been um, in the orchestra pit more recently. Mm-hmm. I played for um, DCU's 9 to 5 on, on the trumpet. The trumpet's actually my, my first instrument. It's, it's what I studied at college on. And uh, I'll be playing for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as well in the summer, which I've been, I'm looking forward to that. Um, ironically, I'm playing trumpet with Jack Divers, who was <laughs> Judas in, <Yes>. uh, <laughs> in, in Superstar. So Jesus and Judas are back together again. <laughs> And, you know, um, from being Jesus, where do you go from here in the theatre world? Because you oh, can't just know. go it's almost backwards, can you? You've, you know, what's, what's the next big role? It was, yeah, I mean, it was my first show as well. So yes. it's my, my so... first taste of theatre. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, it, yeah, it was the, the lead role. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what comes up and I'll... Um, I, I would like another, another crack on yeah. stage rather than under it. Um, but we'll, we'll see. It has to be the right show, I think. And do you think maybe you'll get into the role again with a new hairdo? Because no, no. I see, I always remember you with your really short hair and then you become Jesus. And to me, you still are. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have to do a lot of physical <laughs> preparation for that role. No, I, I'd, I'd probably go for something that I could, I could at least keep some of it. Yes. <laughs> while I've still got it, hey. <laughs> yes, before you get old and, what do you go, bald or grey? Older. Older, yes. <laughs> OK, well, we're going to be chatting to you again um, a bit later on about your inspiration into music. Because mm-hmm. you know, you've had such a variety of um, careers, a bit like myself as well. We've, yes, done, a bit, yeah. we've done a bit of everything. Um, and how you obviously got into music and what, what was that real you know, desire for music. We're going to be talking about that very um, soon. But we're going to play one of your tracks now and you've actually picked this. So tell us a bit about, um, you've picked Gaslightning. So tell us a bit about this song. Yeah, Gaslighting was uh, the second track on my previous album. Um, it's got the most percussion I've ever recorded on anything. I think we had something like 20 different um, drums symbols on it we we, we layered it up um we being um at, at Ballagroove studios yeah. uh jip began he's a fantastic um sound engineer and producer so we we had a lot of fun with this it was it was quite epic we had to radio edit it down as well because the original version was was nearly seven minutes long so. yeah she did just say that to me Jake, yeah. <laughs> Jake, you pick the short version <laughs> um but yeah it was it was a lot of fun to to create um little harder to recreate live 
because mm. uh, I, I don't think there's enough musicians to <laughs> to play all the uh, all the percussion. But it, it was great, and it's it's a song about overcoming adversity. <laughs> 